Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Atari A to Z, a series of short playthroughs of Atari 8-bit games, some which I grew up with, and some which are new to me. Today's game is F-15 Strike Eagle, which was a 1984 release for Microprose, developed initially for Atari 8-bit and then ported to other systems. It went on to spawn a successful series of three games in total, as well as an arcade adaptation of its second instalment, and has always been regarded as a defining influence in the development of the military flight sim genre. The game is designed by Sid Meier, who was initially most well known for his flight simulations with Microprose, before later moving on to create probably his most well known work, the Civilization series. F-15 Strike Eagle was a massive success, selling 250,000 copies across the many platforms it was ported to by 1987, and over a million units by 1989, ultimately reaching about 1.5 million units in total. The game was widely praised back in the day for providing a convincing, thrilling, yet accessible take on the military flight sim, but as time went on more and more commentators started to note how simplistic the game's mechanics, structure and graphics were. When played today, the game's probably best thought of as a rather arcadey take on the military flight sim rather than something you should take too seriously. When thought of in those terms, it actually still holds up pretty well as a fun game. Now, unlike a lot of 8-bit games, this is one I've actually got a proper copy of. Not a pirate copy, this is an actual original copy from back in the day. So this, a lot of 8-bit software was distributed in this sort of booklet style uh, package, at least in the UK. I don't know if it was the same situation in the States, but this was a nice sort of compact way of packaging your software. You could fit a manual in there, you could fit a five and a quarter inch disc in there. And indeed, if we look inside, you've got the disc there, which the label is so old it's actually falling off. <laughs> uh, this is a dual format release as well. That disc has got the Commodore 64 version on one side and the Atari 8-bit version on the other. All right. Let's read the blurb since we've got it. Strap into your ejection seats and get ready for challenging and exciting modern jet fighter combat with F-15 Strike Eagle, double exclamation mark. Fly combat missions, engage enemy aircraft and destroy enemy ground targets in the skies of Southeast Asia, Europe and the Middle East. All the sophisticated tools of modern electronic warfare are available, including computer-assisted targeting, heads-up display, airborne radar and ground tracking target display maps. As the F-15 pilot, you employ your air-to-air -air missiles, cannon and high-explosive bombs to accomplish air defense and strategic deep interdiction bombing missions. The F-15's defenses include surface-to-air missile launch indicators, electronic countermeasures, afterburners, flares and full aerobatic capabilities to outfight, outfly or outthink enemy aircraft, air-to-air -air missiles and surface-to-air missiles. Seven different combat missions, four skill levels, and infinite number of combat scenarios offer continuous stimulation and excitement. F-15 will thrill and challenge you and give you the chance to prove you have the right stuff of an Eagle fighter pilot. There's a few quotes from some reviews at the time here as well. So, uh, Neil Randall from Compute said, More intense than a straight flight simulator, it combines the basic realism of a flight simulator with the tension of a good arcade game. I highly recommend it for anyone with an interest in either. Uh, Peter Paplaskas from Run, not heard of that one, presumably a magazine, uh, said if you're looking for a chance to experience some high adventure and danger in a realistic and challenging format, F-15 Strike Eagle is for you. Mark Randolph from USA Today said, now there's a way to really earn your wings. This is more than the right stuff. Once you've gotten used to flying these banks, it'll be hard to go back to just cruising from LaGuardia to Logan. F-15 is definitely the only way to fly. So that's a reference to uh, the civilian flight simulators that were around at the time. Uh, Microprose did one called Solo Flight, if I recall. And this was also where the series that we now know as Microsoft Flight Simulator got started as well with a company called Sublogic. And then finally, Russ Lockwood from Creative Computing said, the overall effect is a fantastic flight simulator. If you want to experience air-to-air -air combat without putting your hide on the line, pick up F-15 Strike Eagle. We recommend it highly. Let's just have a quick look at the manual while we've got it as well. Or the flight operations manual, as they put it. Oh God, this has been in this box for a long time. It's actually stuck in there. But yeah, it's actually a reasonably sized manual there. And uh, so we've got sort of basic instructions at the front there with your keyboard controls and your what the joystick does and things. And as sort of became traditional for microprose simulations in particular in later years. There's also a lot of sort of, um, 
don't know what you call it really, uh, quasi-scientific information, I guess, about how aircraft actually work, uh, how to do aerobatics and all that sort of thing, and how, uh, how the air works over the aircraft and that sort of thing. And then finally, you got a bit of information about the various theatres of war in the game as well. So a lot of information in there. That was one of the more comprehensive manuals that you would have seen back in the day. And uh, Microprose very much continued that tradition with their subsequent releases. You might be able to see a few of them behind me. They came in these lovely, huge, glossy boxes. And uh, the manuals were almost designed to resemble coffee table books as much as anything else. Uh, a while back, we looked at um, games like Knights of the Sky and F-15 Strike Eagle 2 on Atari ST-80Z. You would have seen a few of those then. I'll put some, some cards up to, to link to those if you've not seen those already. But yeah, Microprose were always serious about um, helping people learn about flight and about military combat in aircraft with their releases. And it seems that started as early as F-15 Strike Eagle, which is really cool to see. Anyway, enough talking and looking at packaging, let's go play F-15 Strike Eagle. Okay, here we are with F-15 Strike Eagle Air Combat in the Jet Age, which we last saw on the Atari ST, quite early in the Atari ST A to Z series. Uh, so this is the version that came out first on the Atari 8-bit, indeed before any of the uh, other ports. So this is where it all began. This is where every well-regarded series uh, got its start on the Atari 8-bit. So you can see we have a couple of options to begin with. We can play between one and four players. It's alternating rather than uh, all playing simultaneously. There's no split-screen fanciness here. Um, which is a shame because Microprose actually did do some split-screen flight simulators in their early days, uh, but this was not one of them. And then you have a choice of several different missions uh, to go from. You've got Libya, Egypt, Haiphong, Syria, Hanoi, Iraq, and the Persian Gulf. And you press the option key to select between difficulty levels. You're on rookie by default, which is the second difficulty level. Then there's pilot, ace, and also arcade, which is the easiest mode. Uh, and then I believe you have to actually play the missions. Oh no, you don't. Yeah, you can you can just press the key of the one you want to to play. Okay, so let's start with Libya, and we'll see how this works. And you press start, and off you go. There's no taking off and landing to worry about in F-15 Strike Eagle. You just start uh, with an enemy directly ahead of you. So what we're looking at here is out through the cockpit of the F-15. This will look familiar if you remember the Atari ST version. Um, very similar sort of affair. You use the map on the left of the cockpit to navigate your way to your targets. So the... Um, oh, we've got a, a missile on the way. Let's deal with this chappy first. I always enjoyed the fact you didn't need to be particularly precise with your guns in this game. But anyway, your goal in this game is to ideally destroy your primary target, which is indicated by um, the square on the map. But then you also get additional points for the more targets you destroy along the way, too. So we're going to head towards our primary target here and take that out first. And then we'll use some of our remaining weaponry on anything that happens to be left over. We can just see the primary target coming into view on the radar at the bottom. And it's the little blue dot on the landscape below. So all we need to do is line up our bomb site with it. And hit the trigger to drop a bomb. Oh, we didn't quite hit. Okay, so let's go around for another pass. You've also still got another aircraft on our tail as well. So I'm going to arm my medium range missiles. And fire one off at our friend over there. To hopefully get him off our back. Well, I, think, I think we were too close for that to be effective, judging by... It. The missile's trajectory on the radar. Let's take him out with some guns since we're up close. Now you can probably see sort of the, the main issues that people might have with this 
from a modern perspective is i mean the frame rate is the main one that was also an issue on the atari st version um but also there's, there's just certain aspects of the presentation that make it a little bit tricky as well like there's, there's no sensation of height um is one of the most difficult things to kind of come to terms with in this game because that sort of patchwork grid pattern that is underneath you at all times that never that never gets any closer and so it can sometimes feel a little bit tricky to judge how high you are which can be a little bit troublesome during bombing missions sometimes from oh, taking damage from something and i think that's probably thrown our bombs off target as well still with our friend who's trying to shoot us down You see, this game was using some simplistic polygon graphics at the time for the other aircraft. Um, but with the sort of relative simplicity of the graphics, that wasn't necessarily always obvious. You see, now we're taking a bit of damage. The actual performance of the aircraft is a lot more erratic. So it's sort of wobbling around all over the place now. Oh, he's still there. Or is that a different one? There must just be one that keeps launching itself from a nearby airbase. That's one of the things that sort of happens in this game. You'll notice on the map, down in the lower left, the sort of white cross shapes, uh, those are airbases. And then the black uh, missile shapes, I believe those are surface-to-air missile sites. So it might, in fact, behoove us to go and deal with those before we try and take out our primary target. Alright, let's try again. We're going to run out of bombs eventually anyway. Oh, stall. Too slow. Oh no! A little bit more thrust. That's got a hit, surely. Surely. There we go. Right, at this point, when you've destroyed your primary target, you can... If you want, you can head straight back to your aircraft carrier and go land, which might not be a terrible idea on our current condition because this plane is wobbling around all over the place. But we can maybe, maybe take out that airbase on the way. That might be fun. Although we don't seem to be being pursued at the minute, which is nice. Only got two bombs left. We might as well do a bombing run as we go past. I'll wait for it to show up either visual contact or on the radar. It should hopefully be pretty soon. There it is. That flashing blue light on the, uh, the cockpit. That is the low altitude warning. When you're below 6,500 feet, I think it is, that light comes on just to warn you that you're getting a bit low. You might also notice down at the bottom of the screen as well, we're getting a little bit low on fuel as well. We started with 20,000 pounds of fuel and we're down to less than 8,000 now, so it's probably definitely time to head home. I suspect the damage we took probably gave us a bit of a fuel leak. And that seems to be going down quite a bit more quickly than it does normally. But it's enough to get us home. So as long as we just uh, hold the aircraft reasonably steady... We should be fine. And you'll notice that although the grid pattern on the ground doesn't give you a good visual indication of altitude, it does at least make the distinction between you being over the land and over the sea, which is nice. I 
Okay, so like I mentioned at the start, you don't actually have to land in this, just like you don't have to actually take off. Um, but you do have to fly back to your airbase or aircraft carrier. And we can just see that coming into sight here. So you basically you just need to fly over it. And also apparently be low enough, which I am not. Give me a little bit more power before we stall, if you please. There we go. There's the stall. I'm throwing this poor bird around the skies. Let's try again. I failed to actually land this thing, despite the fact that you don't actually have to land it in this game. There we go. Mission accomplished. Primary targets one, air target six, ground targets one. So you get points for every target you take out, both ground and air. Uh, and then when you've done that, you can then move on to the next mission. Uh, you can do those missions in any order you want, and indeed, you, I believe you could probably repeat the Libya mission if you want to as well. Um, if you're playing with multiple people, you take it in turns to do a mission, um, and if you die or if you accomplish your mission, it goes on to the next pilot's turn. Uh, if you land for repairs and refueling and all that sort of thing without completing your mission, or if you eject and excuse me, or if you eject and are um, rescued then it's the same player's turn. Uh, okay, so let's go to Egypt. Once again, we start directly behind a friend who we shall take out. Now this time, in order to get to our primary target, we have to kind of run the gauntlet of a few surface-to-air missile sites. So it might be in our interests uh, to take some of them out along the way. There's a SAM launch, uh, and that is a heat seeker, as indicated by that second light along the control panel. So we drop a flare to distract that. And that should do us nicely. Let's cut back on the power a little bit. Lose some altitude, and then watch out for these SAM sites. As you see, that, that light is still flickering, which indicates we're still being tracked. Another missile being oops. Another missile being launched in our direction. And there's the SAM site coming into view on the radar there. And we can see it far below us as well. So let's dive down and see if we can do something about that. I suspect we're much too high and much too close for the moment. So let's there we go. Let's lose a bit of altitude and then we'll swing back round and drop a bomb on it. Oops. Worth noting that as with... Missed. Worth noting that as with a lot of um, military flight sims at the time, uh, a missile being launched at you doesn't necessarily mean that a missile is going to hit you. This is one of the aspects of the game that was, is sort of very sim-like. So heat-seeking missiles, for example, which is what is being fired at us at the moment, um, they struggle to track you if you're not presenting a heat signature to them, like, say, your engines. There we are, that's taken out that SAM site. So there's also an airfield on our way to the uh, the target as well, so we may as well deal with that as well. But yeah, if you actually watch the, um, the missiles on the radar, they're not really coming anywhere near us because they're not able to track us properly. We do have a friend over there though. 
Let's give him a missile to worry about. Is that going to take him? Hard to say from this distance. There's the airfield, though. Oh, we got him. Let's just get a little bit closer. Line up that bomb site nicely. And release. Lovely hit there. Right, let's just deal with our friend. He managed to take off before we... Oh dear. Throttle up when climbing, Pete. Please remember this. You know how aircraft work. You dead? Good. Alright, let's go for our primary target. Maybe we should take out that SAM site. On the way. And maybe that airfield as well. Can't have to take out a few more targets, can it? Of course not. I remember playing this game when I was quite young, and it actually taught me quite a lot of things. Probably most notably, it taught me about um, sort of numerical bearings and headings, and how all that worked. So I learned things like... How numerical bearings corresponded to points on the compass and that sort of thing. Ooh, that missile is coming right for us. Nimbly avoid it. I say nimbly. Avoid it at single figure frames per second, but. <laughs> Come here, please. Fine, I'll shoot you down upside down if that's what you want. Alright. Let's deal with that aircraft so we're not harassed. Oh no, there's another one! Leave me alone. I just want to bomb you. Ouch! Took that one right on the chin. Right, not quite as serious damage as last time, though, despite that being a fairly direct missile hit. I'm way too high for this, though. No, oh, I think we missed. That's upsetting. Oh well, better go for the primary target. Oh no! Uh, because... I only have one bomb left. <laughs> you can see that from the uh, the armaments indicator over on the right. Multifunction display. I say multifunction display, it has a single function in this. But in the real aircraft it's a multifunction display. Oh, there uh, is the target. That's never going to hit that. Nope, missed. Alright, so I guess we're going to have to go and restock. Also get a bit short on fuel as well. It's fine, we'll be fine. Just don't hit the afterburners. Well, there's a missile on the way in. Have some flares. There we go. That blinking red light, I think, is our fuel light. So, hopefully, 
we can get far enough across the map. To be able to restock. Although I'm actually not all that confident about this right now. I've dropped my external fuel tanks now. So we should be able to... get going a little bit more quickly and hopefully a little bit more fuel efficiently. We are going to pass directly over those SAM sites though. But we still got a few flares so we should be okay. I am quite worried about that fuel situation though. Because we're getting very low indeed. Let's start bringing the altitude down a bit as well. So the moment we arrive, we can be ready to land. I don't think we're going to make it. Uh oh, there goes the fuel. Well, we got a we got a bit of altitude, so we can. Come on, we can make this. We can totally make this. Now, if the if the base would just come into sight, that would be lovely. I think. Might be time to eject. Bailout captured. Well, there we go. Our game is over. <laughs> Due to embarrassing lack of forward planning. And indeed, getting shot by a missile right in the face. But anyway, um, that is how F-15 Strike Eagle works. Um, you just... Uh, you play. You try and score as many points as possible. You try and survive as long as possible. And then you do it all again. So, as you can see, it's a very simple... There's no sort of ongoing dynamic campaign or anything like that. There's no effort to sort of add any real strategic content besides picking your targets on the way to your primary target destination. Um, but it is fun. It is fun. It's a game I still actually enjoy playing quite a bit today because of that simplicity. It gives it a really nice arcade style feel. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's not a flight sim that you should take seriously at all, but... As an early example of a genre which really blossomed throughout the late 80s and early 90s in particular, it's a really interesting game to look at and one that I'm I'm very fond of in both its Atari ST and Atari 8-bit incarnations, which we've now seen both of. So yeah, I enjoyed revisiting that. Um, I will probably spend a bit more time with that um, off camera, to be perfectly honest, because uh, that was good fun. That was good fun, and I can definitely do a lot better than I did today. Anyway, we'll leave that there for now, though. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.